everybody, my name is Ken Riley and I'm bringing you another exciting video on living on gold. As we explained a little earlier, this series is all about the geology, the real geology of what moves gold. And then we're really aiming this at do-it-yourselfers who want to build their own equipment. They can't afford the high cost of $1,500 per per mill, $4,000 per jaw crusher, that sort of thing. And we're going to get into all the aspects of processing mostly load gold. It's also covering uh, plaster gold, but we'll get into that a little later. So we showed you last week the hub that we were working on for our mill and we covered the differences between chain mill and hammer mill. So this last week we put together a few little hammers to go on the hub. We have three hammers per hub and three hubs. So this week we're going to show you how to build the hammers. This is one of the hammers that's mostly done. We still have a little welding and grinding to do on it. We've set this up so that we'll have about a one-eighth one inch clearance. This is our typical six-inch casing. And it shows you the hammers come within about three-sixteenths of an inch. Those will be ground down a little bit on the ends. We've hardened the ends with weld. And those will be ground down a little bit closer. So we'll have about a quarter of an inch clearance all the way around. We're not sure what the ideal clearance is, but we want it pretty close so that we end up with a fine grind. So this is what your hammer looks like. It's three pieces of billet steel. Two of the pieces are two, to, two and a quarter inch long and the center one is one inch long. Now we'll go into the shop and show you how to make the parts, how to cut them, all the, all the steps in putting that little hammer together. But these are going to be really, really good at grinding everything down from, say, a half inch down to 200 mesh. So with that, let's go to the shop and show you how to do it. Okay, so I mentioned in a, an earlier video, if you do a lot of metal cutting, this is the kind of saw you want. It's a dry cut saw, cut steel, specially designed for that. This thing does a great job. This is our 1 inch by 3 16 flat steel, and we're doing two pieces that are 2 and a quarter. and one piece that's one inch. That's for each of the, the hammers. And as we also mentioned earlier, you got to protect yourself. You need ear protection, eye protection, and then we'll get to cutting this. Set that up in the clamp, check the alignment, make it tight, and away we go. Next station, we take our pieces that we just cut, our billets, we 
grind the corners and the edges on the grinder, take the rust off on our, our wire brush, and then we're all set to go to the next station, which is drill the pivot hole, and the final station will be welding it together. So let's get going. Now for this operation we're going to mark our steel with a little punch to show the bit where to drill the hole. Guides the bit. And then after we drill our hole we'll finish it up a little and then we're all ready to, to do our welding. So we're going to come down in this particular hammer come down three-eighths of an inch and then center it at a half inch across like so Get our punch mark I'm going to clamp these two together and drill them at the same time Make sure you're line boring the two together. Keep the boring even. Well, that's pretty good. And one thing I want to mention at this time, if you're doing a lot of either grinding or especially wire brush on rust. Rust is a killer for your lungs. If you do a lot of it, like more than what I just did, always wear a respirator. And you always wear a respirator if you're welding, even if it's MIG welding or TIG welding, because they give off a lot of toxic gases. You're going to kill your lungs that way. So we will use that for welding. When I did all nine of my hammers I was grinding and wire brushing like I said especially rust. Rust is so fine it'll get into your lungs and it'll kill you. So I always use a respirator for that. So here we go. Keep your oil close by. Start by making a a little bit of a hole. That's on your punch mark. You drop a little oil into that spot and you're ready to ready to rock. As you can see I use some of the lowest cost equipment you can get out of Harbor Freight. This is a central machinery Harbor Freight special. And I think I paid $80 for this, this little drill press, and it is really handy. These little ones really do a lot of work for you. So we'll finish this up with our quarter inch hole, dress the quarter inch holes with a half inch bit, and we'll be ready to take it to the welder. Now to prepare the pieces for welding, I'm going to use a little spacer. It'll clamp the pieces together in alignment. Make sure that billet is put in right.
Okay, so we got our welders set up. We have a combination MIG and stick welder from East from Eastwood, 250 amps. Set on our MIG torque set up on it. We're using 19 volts and 153 feet per second, inches per second. We're going to tag this and then finish rolling it up, and that's the last part. Well, actually, the second of the last. After we weld it, we do our finish grinding back in our grinder to get all the welds kind of even out a little bit, make it fit really well inside of the case. So we'll get this done and show you what we did. Little tip on welding. When I'm welding the bottom part of this hammer, I'm actually, instead of welding with the pieces, I'm welding across the pieces. It's a whole lot easier to see your edges if you're welding across, and your weld seems to come out a whole lot better going across rather than with the pieces. When I do the sides, I'll probably use a series of circles or E's backward ease on both sides because that's not as critical as here. So oh, just a tip on welding. Okay, so after hogging off all the, the, the rough material on that hammer, Use our handy dandy four and a half inch hand grinder to actually do the shaping. This gives you a lot better control of shaping the last part of it. So you could do all the grinding with that actually, but at least do the finished grinding with the hand grinder because it lets you round everything off and now you get a nice little hammer. And that'll fit in there just nicely and We'll finish all these up. Next week we'll have all of these finished welded, round, mounted, and the assembly back in the case so we can show you the whole thing spinning up. So, till next time, take care. We'll see you out in Arizona. And remember, my name is not Jeff. I am not Roger from Oz. I'm Ken from Copperland. We're going to show you how to live in gold. Till next time, see you later.